like the Legos and the Nerf guns and just like boy stuff. Like I'll find little boy underwear, or little shoes around the house. And I'm just like, oh, like it's still, it's just like, oh, God's grace. Like I'm, I'm a mom to these boys and it's just the, the greatest gift I could ever imagine. Hey sisterhood, it is Kristen here. Over the past few months, ever since Zach and I adopted our two boys from Ukraine, which if you haven't heard, we adopted two boys from Ukraine, woohoo! We recorded a video, you can go back and watch that on our channel, recorded an entire long form podcast episode over at the Girl Defined Show. Check it out if you wanna get more details. But since our adoption, which happened in April, so we're about five months going on the sixth month of having our boys here in the US, a lot of you have been DMing me and emailing me and just asking like, how is it going? <laughs> how you doing? And I really appreciate that because yes, those of you who have been through adoption, whether you were adopted yourself or you've adopted children or you have a sibling who was adopted or you have close friends who've adopted, um, you know firsthand that there are joys and there are challenges. And so a lot of you have reached out and just asked me like, hey, how are you doing? How is the transition? How are the boys doing? Um, how are you guys adjusting as a new family? And I really appreciate y'all reaching out. It truly means so much just knowing that y'all care, that you're praying for us. But you may have noticed that on my personal social media, I have been laying a little low. And that's because Zach and I have really been focusing on just pouring our energy and effort, effort and brain power into this new family that God has given us. And it's been amazing. But I would be lying if I said we have not faced a lot of challenges because we have. And I'm going to share some of those. I'm going to give you guys a little update on where we're at today, how we're doing, how the boys are doing, um, and just all that good stuff. But I want to say thank you to all of you who support Girl Defined to make videos like this possible because y'all are the backbone of Girl Defined. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am giving a huge shout out right now to our patrons. Those of you who support our channel over on patreon.com slash girl defined, you guys give a dollar or two dollars per video, sometimes three, four, five. Some of you give more like 10 and we see every single one of you. We see your names. We praise God for your support because you enable us to keep moving forward and to keep Christian content online. So thank you. And as our way of saying thanks, if you're like, hmm, I'm interested in supporting, maybe this will push you over the edge because every single month we create free products that are patron exclusive and we give them to our patron, patron supporters. They're all downloadables. For example, here's some 50 questions to deepen your friendships, upside down, five strategies for thriving as a single girl, all downloadable guides, a devotional set my heart, a seven day devotional for drawing close to Jesus. Just really beautiful, really practical. And then this is one of our most recent, how to discern a guy's true character, a simple, practical and biblical guide. So these are things that um, our patrons get every month. If you choose to support us now or anytime in the future, you will not only get free products every month, but you'll get access to all of the past products. And there are dozens of them now, um, just resources that will help you grow in your faith. Okay, oh, go to patreon.com slash girl fine. Um, so how are we doing? Well, let's just say that life has changed so much for me. My house is covered in Nerf gun bullets and um, Legos. <laughs> we'll just start there. <laughs> Two things that I, I never thought possible. And you know, when I see those Nerf gun bullets, like I find them in the most random places in my house. I'll be like doing the dishes and I'll see one stuck behind like the coffee pot or like under the fridge or in my candle. And I'm just like, I honestly smile because for so many years, for 10 years, Zach and I prayed for children and we went through multiple miscarriages, wrestling with a diagnosis of unexplained infertility and really coming to grips with the fact that we might never be parents. And then God really did a huge work in our heart and and just opened the door for adoption and gave us such a love and passion for it um, that we share that whole story on the Girl Defined show or in the video we did a while back here. Um, but when I see those Nerf gun bullets, when I see those Legos, honestly, it kind of like, it's like a little piece of God's grace because motherhood was something that I wasn't sure if I would ever get to experience the joys and the challenges of motherhood. If it was a season I was ever going to enter, I just didn't know. And I was trying to hold it with such a surrendered hand, trusting God, but praying for it like crazy. So when I see those little signs of children, like the Legos and the Nerf gun bullets, like little boys specifically, I'm just like, like those are such, like the, such a grace from the Lord. Cause I never knew if I would see toys in my house, honestly. So yes, it's been so sweet and so precious and just like the way the Lord has given me a, the most overwhelming love for these children, because I'll be honest, like I had never, no one in my immediate family has adopted. We're kind of the first amongst our direct family 
to pursue this. And of course, everyone is so supportive and they've been amazingly loving um, and just 100% on board embracing this whole, the whole process and the boys, but we're kind of pioneering it in our own direct family. And so just to see the way that God has given me such a, an intense, deep, passionate love for these children is something that I just praise him for. And I'm just amazed at how he moves our hearts. And, you know, you wonder beforehand, at least I did like, oh, well, I love these children as much as if I had them biologically. And the answer is Yes. I mean, I don't, I guess I can't say for sure because I don't have biological children, but I don't know how I could love children any more than I do now, if I'm being honest. Like, I love these boys so, so much. So the joys and challenges, that's just to kick it off on a good note <laughs> because I will say the joys do outweigh the challenges. And as I've talked to other parents, they're like, yeah, you know, those are challenges that we're also facing with our biological children. And sometimes it brings me comfort like, okay, yeah, there are adoption challenges that are probably unique because of the adoption, right? Like that will present unique challenges, but it is comforting in a lot of ways to know that a lot of other parents are walking through very similar challenges with kids that they've raised since they were babies. So I'm like, okay, we're kind of all in this together. Um, but yeah, there are some specific, specific challenges that we've been facing. And I would say the biggest challenge, which I knew this going in, we received so much training um, before this adoption, but the one challenge that has proved to be the biggest for us, I know every adoption is different and everyone's experiences are so different, but for us, it really has been the language barrier. Our boys came into our family basically only speaking Russian and we mostly only speak English. Zach and I had been learning some Russian, but you know, it takes a long time to learn a language like Russian when you only speak English. And so our capabilities just aren't enough to have these deep heartfelt conversations. And so over the past five months, that has been the biggest challenge. Um, I was telling Zach, it's a really weird feeling to grow, to every day grow deeper and deeper in love with these humans, but, but at the same time for your communication to continue to be limited. So like typically when you are loving someone, whether it's a relationship or a child, the more you grow in love with them, it's like, wow, the more you can communicate with them. But with these boys, it's not that way. Now, yes, they can speak way more English now. I mean, we've been ESL teacher coming to our house. I've been working with them every day. Like there, it is an English emphasis for their school, but it's still not like we can just have heartfelt conversations. And so that's been the biggest challenge because that impacts every part of life. Like just when we're when we're working through a conflict, right? Like whether they have conflicts with each other as brothers or if there's a parent-child conflict and we're trying to work through it or if they don't understand something and they're confused or if we're trying to set boundaries and explain the reasons why. Um, it's like, uh, like so hard. And we did a lot of Google Translate, the app early on, but the boys don't really like it as much anymore. They just wanna, they wanna hear from us. And so, and they don't really want to use it for themselves either. And so, yeah, that's just been the biggest challenge. It's been really hard, if I'm being honest. And that has caused a lot of other smaller challenges. So I am grateful for the day when we can fully converse and have those deep, heartfelt conversations about everything. Um, so yeah, those are some challenges. I would say just like the discipleship aspect of it, us wanting to teach them about God and teach them about how much God loves them and has a plan for them and and like why certain things are okay or not okay, like what God's bigger plan is, like in all different areas of life when they have questions, it's like, oh, that's, I guess that's the language barrier again. Like that makes it very, very hard when you love someone so much and you want to communicate like so much to them and you can't, that makes it really hard. I would say for me personally, the, the massive life adjustment, which I know this is true for any new parent, whether it's like adoption or biological your life drastically changes when you go from not having a child to having a child or no kids to kids. Because for me, before 10 years of not having kids, I mean, you can imagine, like Zach and I, we filled our time with work and ministry and church and family, community, like all of the things that we've been involved in. And you don't realize how much you take for granted, just that, that flexibility, that the ability to just say, yeah, I can be there. Like I can do that thing at two, no problem. And now suddenly I'm 100% mom mode and which I love. But then at the same time, it's like, oh wow, I have to coordinate like a babysitter if I'm going to go and do anything, you know, without the boys or for Zach and I for date nights. Like we, 
kind of prided ourselves on how faithfully we had date nights before kids when we could just go anytime, anywhere. And I'm like kind of laugh looking back on that. And now I'm like, oh wow, like we have to be so intentional to even leave the house. <laughs> like this is really hard. So just th those kind of things, like the time, like the way that I have to be um, so much more intentional with my time. And I was joking with someone, I almost feel like an event coordinator now because morning till night, I kind of have to have a plan for the schedule of like what the day is going to look like for the boys and for us. And before I didn't have to think as deeply about it. And so, yeah, they wake up like, mama, what's the plan? And I'm like, oh yeah. So school has helped us get more of a routine, which has been really nice. Um, but that has been an adjustment. And then kind of a funny one is that Zach and I, we've never been parents. And so the boys have really revealed <laughs> our different parenting styles. And Zach and I, our personalities are pretty different, but we didn't really realize like how different our parenting styles would be. So that's been a challenge and, and it's not been a huge challenge, but one where we're like, oh, we're really seeing our personalities come out in the way we parent. So just for the two of us to be intentional to learn from other parents who've gone before and like obviously so many marriages have like polar opposite personalities in the marriage and asking like, how do you guys handle this? How do you stay unified? How do you... Um, move forward together as a team and like just growing in our understanding of what it means to like raise children in the Lord and disciple them and have that unified front as like a married couple and just be genuine in our in our own mistakes and like loving the boys well, giving them that consistency, all of that good stuff. That's been a challenge that we've never had to face. So we're working through that. So yeah, overall, those are some of the biggest challenges. But to be honest, like we haven't faced challenges that are just earth shattering or, you know, cause I have heard stories where it's been just like so life altering in the hardest sense of the word for some families, the, the adoption transition. And we just praise God. Like we pray every day and we've asked him the Lord for so many things to just answer our prayers and to help this transition. The bonding has been beautiful and amazing. The bonding of each of us with the boys, them with us, us as a family, um, just ways that God has answered our prayers above and beyond what we even prayed for it has been absolutely incredible and so humbling and we just praise God for his grace and mercy every single day. Um, some of the sweet things I already mentioned like the Legos and the Nerf guns and just like boy stuff like I'll find little boy underwear or little shoes around the house and I'm just like oh like it's still it's just like oh God's grace like I'm I'm a mom to these boys and it's just the, the greatest gift I could ever imagine. Um, so the sweet relationship with them and just like the little hugs they love to hold my hand when we're walking or just the fun activities that I'm now doing that I never, like I wasn't in the kid world, so I wasn't going to parks. I wasn't going to like the Lego store or going, you know, like even like riding bikes, like we weren't doing things like that as much. And now all the things that they love getting to enjoy that with them and like enter their world and just bond through doing stuff together, living life together. It's been like so, so sweet. And yes, I do have Nerf gun wars with them. That's like their favorite thing. They want to put on, um, like we'll put on soundtrack music, like, ooh, like dramatic music to like, you know, epic movies. And then, you know, we'll all get our goggles and our Nerf guns and like turn the lights off. And it's like their favorite thing ever. And we'll have like a full blown, full family Nerf gun war and they love it. And I'm just cracking up like, this is so funny. Like this is my life, but it's really, really sweet. I love that so much. So just seeing the beauty of the gospel is another thing through the adoption. Like I've shared about this so many times. I feel like the gospel has become so much sweeter and so much real to me. Um, it was real before, but seeing like real orphans, bringing them into our home and then seeing the parallels in scripture of how every single one of us before Christ, like we are the orphan and we are the one in need and the amazing love of God to come down, to die for us and then to accept us as we place our faith in him, to accept us as his own sons and daughters. And the Bible literally uses the word adoption and he gives us a new name. He gives us a new inheritance. He gives us a new identity, a new purpose. We are, we have a place of permanent belonging in the family of God. And it's just the most beautiful, beautiful picture of the gospel, earthly adoption and what it points to that spiritual reality that every single one of us as Christians is living in. And so that has been amazing and just so, so eye-opening and 
just humbling for me to see this kind of other angle of the gospel and just really transforming my, my transforming my heart in so many ways. So yes, it's been filled with joys, filled with challenges as every journey is. Um, and I share a lot about our story. So actually, interestingly enough, our upcoming book, Not Part of the Plan, that Bethany and I wrote together, Trusting God with the Twists and Turns of Your Story. When we started writing this, it was right around the same time that Zach and I started down the adoption road. So the process to international adoption. And I was really hoping to include some of the story in the book, but I didn't want to include it if the book needed to be like the deadline for the manuscript came before the adoption was finalized. Because, you know, until something's final, you don't know if it's going to be final. But it was so cool because the adoption was finalized right before the deadline of the book. And so I was able to include the story in this book. Um, and I share my whole journey of infertility, recurrent miscarriage, the journey that God took me on to um, change my heart toward adoption and then that whole process. And just the fact that none of, when I look back on the past 10 years, so much of what I see was not a part of my plan when I got married. Um, and Zach and I just celebrated 10 years of marriage. And so it's just so ironic to look back and think, wow, so much of my life that I see wasn't a part of the plan I imagined but God has truly turned my ashes into beauty and given me such a perspective of hope and contentment and joy in him. And so that is really what this book is about, is that journey that I walked on over the past decade, the journey Bethany has been on over the past decade, and just all that God has taught us in that. And so if you find yourself in a place of struggling, of experiencing loss, of wrestling with prayers that feel unanswered, um, worry, dealing with emotions in the midst of it all, just trusting God, then I think you'll find this really relatable, really transparent book super encouraging for you. It releases October 12th, but you can pre-order now. It'll be available everywhere. You can get more details at girldefined.com slash trust, or just go straight to our shop, girldefined.com slash shop to pre-order a copy. Um, but that is like all of my heart in, in for any of us when life doesn't turn out the way we planned. That is... There's just so many good nuggets of truth that God is continuing to teach me. So there's just a little bit of an update on how we're doing, um, kind of the latest with us. Overall, truly things are going so well. And again, I just praise God for the gift and blessing of adoption, for parenthood. I praise God for these two boys that are just the biggest gifts that we never expected, like above and beyond God's goodness and kindness to us. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, you can find information on our website, girldefined.com for that. If you want to hear more of our story, go check out the Girl Defined show. Scroll down until you see the episode. It says our Ukrainian international adoption story. Um, but I would love to hear from you. If you're not on Instagram, head on over to Instagram at Girl Defined and leave me a comment under this video. If you're already there, just leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Um, if you have additional questions about the adoption process, about currently how we're doing or anything that I didn't mention that you're like, I'm wondering about this, just drop it below and I'll get on there and answer those questions. All right. Love you guys.